Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep it fairly brief. My voice is uh, not, not doing so well today, uh, so I don't, I don't want to wear it out entirely. Um, I also figure, you know, you probably heard most of what I have to say anyway already. Uh, I, I don't know that I have that much fresh for you. Um, uh, but maybe, maybe it's, uh, it's fun, to, fun to see the old guy uh, uh, talk still. Um, uh, so, you know, we're, we're in the middle or I'd actually argue still the, the early days of a pretty phenomenal transition um, on all kinds of levels. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the technology platform um, that we're now deploying and is starting to become um, pretty standard across a lot of industries um, is create, constructed totally differently uh, from, from what we were doing, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Um, uh, and it's, it's good to understand uh, the differences and how this, this, this new world functions um, in order to operate in it, which I assume uh, you're, you're all doing. Um, so probably you're already aware of, of, of how this works, um, but I, I thought it'd be worth going through some of, some of the underpinnings. Um, uh, you know, uh, 10 years ago, um, uh, mostly folks were using uh, just relational databases for enterprise data. There really wasn't a lot, lot of alternative to that. Um, uh, they were running on very expensive hardware, exotic hardware that was um, uh, only used to run uh, the, these sort of enterprise database software. Um, and they were paying a lot for the software. It was all proprietary software um, uh, with, with largely proprietary APIs. You know, SQL is a standard, but uh, not, not implemented uh, necessarily uniformly ac across vendors. Um, and all that's changed. Um, I think the most, the most fundamental change um, is, is in this, uh, this creation of, of the software. Um, so I first learned about this in, uh, about, about, about the power of, of open source uh, as an alternate way of, of creating software. Um, uh, really in, in 2000. I'd, I'd experimented a little in, in open source before that. Um, uh, but in 2000, I um, uh, had written something called Lucene, a text search library, um, uh, and put that up. And it you know, probably wasn't the best test text search technology in the world. It certainly wasn't the most complete. Um, uh, but it, it was open source. Uh, and it seemed to start to gather momentum. Uh, and slowly over time, it's become probably the most successful te text search software, um, predominantly uh, because, not, not because, not for technical reasons, but rather be for, for social reasons, um, because of this open source community that's, that's grown around it, of, of people contributing uh, and people uh, evaluating it um, at no risk, um, adopting it um, at no cost in many cases. Uh, and. Uh, even when they are paying a vendor, uh, they're paying a vendor for services rendered. They're not really um, uh, paying a vendor uh, just, just uh, for, for another copy of something uh, which uh, the, the vendor's not putting any more work into. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it, it really highlighted to me um, uh, how this different way of delivering and producing software um, could uh, really make software succeed, that it was an accelerant um, uh, to software. So a few years later, um, uh, I was uh, you know, working on uh, trying to build a web search engine. Uh, and uh, we were uh, trying to scale it to multiple machines, um, uh, doing it at low cost on commodity hardware. Um, and Google publishes papers. You all know the story. Um, uh, and we started re-implementing uh, Google's ideas. Um, uh, this notion of a distributed file system, uh, they, they had uh, GFS uh, and, and a MapReduce engine across it uh, on, on top. Um, and uh, we called it Hadoop after my son's stuffed toy that, that he named. Uh, and I, I had this, the, the, the idea there really um, was, was not that original. It was, uh, you know, combining these, these two concepts. One that Google had developed, um, uh, and uh, I, I was in a position to realize um, the value of that 
um, uh, because I was trying to, to solve a very similar problem of, of building a large distributed system uh, and, and struggling with it um, without a, a general purpose um, uh, library to help me, um, uh, trying to reinvent uh, these, this reliability uh, for each, each thing you do. Uh, and at the same time, I was aware of the power of, this, of open source to um, strengthen technology, to spread it. Um, and uh, so it seemed obvious to me that these ideas of Google should be uh, developed as, as open source. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't any, I, I don't think, uh, brilliant inspiration. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a one plus one sort of a thing. Um, if, if any of you would have done the same had you been in, in my shoes at that point. Um, uh, what's happened uh, though since has really been phenomenal. Um, you've got really big shoes. I, I do have big shoes, it's true. <laughs> okay. you'd, you'd all fit in my shoes, one at a time probably, but uh, not at the same time. Um, uh, so, you know, what's happened since though, I, I think has, has we, we've seen something develop um, even, I think, uh, stronger, built, built around open source, a, 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 another phenomenon, which is this ecosystem. Um, you know, so, you know, we had this one project with uh, multiple components, uh, initially just HGFS and MapReduce, Yarn got added a few years later, um, uh, and it was its, you know, its own thing. Um, but people didn't use it on its own much. They tended to add on some other libraries on top, which were created as separate projects, um, uh, like Pig and H Hive uh, from, from Facebook. And uh, over time, more and more of these projects got added, adding more and more functionality, each of them independently governed um, to, where, to the point we are today, where we've got uh, you know, 30 or more projects um, providing uh, a really wide range of functionality, all, again, independently governed. Uh, and uh, it's, it, this, this system of, uh, of growth of technology um, without any central control um, uh, through these different communities, um, I think is really the, the lasting legacy. Uh, any part can be replaced over time. And we're, we're beginning to see that uh, with, with Hadoop. You know, MapReduce is over time gradually being replaced by uh, Spark to a large degree. Um, uh, most of the things you could do in MapReduce, you can do better in Spark. Um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a next generation solution uh, and it can uh, gradually replace it. There's other storage systems besides HGFS which may someday replace HGFS. HGFS seems to be going uh, pretty, pretty well so far so I'm not going to predict its death anytime soon. Um, but overall we're seeing this, this evolution. Uh, we've got different institutions um, that, are, that are providing uh, these uh, new systems, which are sort of the mutations in the evolutionary model, uh, and some of them uh, succeed wildly, um, like Spark, like Kafka, um, uh, and others, uh, and become uh, new standards, um, new, new common features of the ecosystem that, that everyone builds on. Uh, and I think this is the, the world we're, we're now living in. Um, uh, and it's, it's exciting time. It's a little frightening because uh, Change is difficult. Uh, I think in previous generations, people could learn a set of technologies and use them through their career. Uh, that's no longer the case. Um, we're, we're all needing to learn new technologies um, every, every few years. Um, uh, that's, that's a cost, that's a price. The benefit is uh, the, these technologies are not just created at a whim. Uh, generally, uh, may maybe they are in initially created that way, but they're not adopted. They don't succeed um, uh, whimsically. They succeed, <coughs> excuse me, because they're providing real value, because they're doing something that you couldn't do before, or you couldn't do very well before, or very easily before. Uh, and so we're we're being provided with more and more powerful tools and able to do more and more things and solving more and more data, which you know takes us back to. The, the, the fundamental trend that's, that's driving all this, the reason why um, uh, we, we needed this uh, open source is, is the proliferation of, of data throughout industries. Uh, you know, Mark Andreessen's famous line about uh, software eating the world, um, I, I think is really 
about data, uh, that, that every industry uh, is adopting technology. You know, we have technology throughout our, our lives now, and our, on our wrists, in our pockets, in our cars, um, uh, you name it. Uh, it's, it's got a processor today, and if it doesn't, it, it's likely to have one soon. These are all generating data, and this data can help us understand um, how our, our world is operating, how our businesses are operating, uh, if we choose to uh, examine it. Um, and so the, the more we have technology to help us understand it, the, the more we can um, improve our, our businesses, our lives, um, uh, optimize things, op become uh, more productive, more efficient. Um, uh, it's you know, generally uh, a, a, a very positive force, um, uh, that this, this, this use of data um, that we see in so many industries that I had no expectation I would ever touch in, in my career. Um, I, I thought it, you know, working in, on search engines and data technologies, uh, I'd, I'd be constrained to, to you know, the, the web was a, was, a, was a pretty huge success in my mind of, of technology touching a lot of the world. Um, but now it's so much wider than that. Uh, you know, we, we got, you know, you, you probably work for a lot of these industries, not just, you know, banks and insurance companies, and, you know, healthcare, tractors, airplanes, cars, uh, you, you name it, uh, entertainment, um, every industry um, is generating data and benefiting from the, the successful analysis of it. Um, there are risks, for, for sure. Um, uh, data can be abused. Um, uh, we, 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 as an industry, need to spend more time thinking not just about what's possible, um, but what's good, what's healthy um, uh, for society, what's ethical, um, uh, and, and that needs to be a core component of, of every decision. Um, uh, and we're getting better about that. You're, you're hearing uh, more about that, about uh, a part of every data science course should be Ethics. I hope. I hope. Uh, how many people here have, have studied data ethics in their, along with their data science? Ouch. <laughs> well, now you have a new new project uh, to, to to work on, uh, in addition to to uh, uh, learning learning new technologies. Um, uh, so anyway, it's it's a it's a pretty phenomenal change, um, uh, and I, I think it's the the change of our century. Um, uh, really, is this, this um, uh, use of data um, uh, to uh, drive um, uh, progress and uh, productivity um, across industries. Uh, we're at the early stages. You think about the, the places where you work and the projects you do. Uh, it's, it's a very small portion of the data that's generated uh, that we're really using to its potential. Um, uh, even if the, the technology platform were to stand still today, um, it would take us a, a decade or more um, to fully take advantage of the existing technologies given existing data sources that we have um, uh, and, and really ach achieve their potential. And the platform isn't standing still. We will have new projects, um, uh, new things coming along uh, at, 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 a, at, a, at a good pace, um, hopefully at a manageable pace. I mean, I think there's a natural limiting uh, factor that the degree to which people can really learn and adopt new technologies is the, is the degree to which they can become standard parts of, of a platform. You know, we we, we can't we, by by nature we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, so it's uh, it's a it's a it's an exciting time. Um, uh, lots of new stuff um, uh, we're, we're seeing these days. People always want to know what's the next big thing, and I, you know, I don't know. Nobody knows, right? That's that's the that's the cool thing about it. It's a, it's a, it's unpredictable. Um, uh, we as a as a crowd know uh, once we decide, <laughs> and we haven't decided what the next big thing is uh, in technology. I mean, it's clear um, uh, there are some exciting things uh, in the near term. A lot of advances in in hardware. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're fairly certain that uh, memory is going to become a lot more plentiful uh, in the next few years. All the hardware hardware vendors are telling us that. Um, uh, we're seeing tremendous advances in uh, machine learning, uh, you know, AI, uh, deep learning sorts of, sorts of methods. Um, uh, you know, it's unbelievable to me that the, the, the degree to which um, speech recognition and image recognition uh, have improved in the past few years. And I think those um, uh, 
that sort of technology carries over um, to lots of other industries, um, uh, to recognition tasks, um, uh, you know, re recognizing marketing, marketing opportunities, recognizing fraud, um, uh, recognizing, uh, you know, uh, cyber uh, violation, you know, uh, invasions, um, uh, you, you name it. I, I, think, I think we can use machine learning in a lot of cases. Um, uh, we, we're just beginning to, to scratch the surface of the use cases there. Um, and the technology is also, um, uh, the, 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 our understanding of it is, is still young. Um, uh, so that's, that's an exciting one to watch. But there's lots of other things uh, that will come that, that we can't imagine. Um, uh, and uh, it'll, it'll be, be exciting to, to see those um, in the coming years. So my voice is fading. I've uh, you know, yelled at you probably long enough. Um, I'd, I'd like to um, hear some of, some of your thoughts and, and questions. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the community really is in charge here and really does drive th this, this, uh, this world of software now. Um, uh, so, so let's hear, hear where you'd like to drive it. Yes, go. Yeah, so I mean, we're kind of off in the, a very distant corner of the world. Somewhere. Everybody says that. Yeah. Everybody says they're the backwater. Everybody says there's nobody in our region who's qualified. Um, and no, you, we've it, got qualified people, but we're just a little bit disconnected from, let's say, the trends that are happening. I, say, I, so, I don't think that's true. Okay. Um, I, I really don't. I, I really think um, everybody reads the same uh, news stuff uh, these days. Um, everybody's, everybody's connected to the same open source projects. Um, everybody, everybody feels like they're in a backwater. And that's, I think, just the fact that things are changing so quickly. But, you know, what I, what I'm in, the question is, you know, what's, what do you see as like the next big things that are on the horizon, right? I, I just told you, I don't know. <laughs> Next. <laughs> like a, you know, ten year distant horizon, like next week, next month. So, I mean, at this at this conference, you know, we saw our people talk about Flink and, and Beam, right? And I don't think how many people here are using Flink? Okay. And Beam. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I mean, maybe a little bit behind. Not that far behind. But well, a bit behind. I mean, the, the challenge for for Flink, frankly, is. Um, uh, Spark has such tremendous mindshare yeah. um, uh, that Flink has to provide something that's sufficiently um, better yeah. um, uh, to, to, you know, be, because Spark's got tremendous numbers of libraries that are, that are growing. Um, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's got a lot of, um, lot of activity, um, and it does a lot of things that, that Flink doesn't yet do. Um, it does have latency issues for stream processing. Um, uh, you, you know, you're not going to have trouble with Spark um, getting you know sub-second latency, you're, you're going to be you know we have, have a few seconds latency, um, whereas Flink you can get down you know into into some some number of milliseconds. Um, although on the other hand, how many people need that? Um, and and I, I think we've certainly seen at Cloudera um, uh, when when faced with that choice, most people are happy to say, oh, a couple seconds is fine. Um, I really need this machine learning algorithm that's implemented in Spark. Um, so is there anything that uh, that you see that you go? That looks interesting. Not, not saying it's taken off, not saying it's the next good thing, which is interesting. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to try to, no, I'm not going to pick any new, new hot thing. That, that I, there, there's a lot of things out there that, are, that, that could be the next thing, but it's really not me to decide. It's, okay. uh, it's, it's, it's for the community. I, I've, I've never been a, a, a picker of those kinds of things much. No. Sorry. <laughs> Back here, you were early to raise your hand. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, it's all. That's fair, right? I. I, I think you can't. Um, if you make something open source under a license that permits people to use it however they want, and then they use it however they want, which includes selling it and making money off of it, and you get mad at them, then you're insane. They're. 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 They're doing exactly what you permitted them to do. Um, so uh, you need to be comfortable if you're uh, creating open source with people, other people benefiting from it. Um, and if you're not, don't release it as open source or um, put some sort of clause in the license uh, that prevent the things that you don't want to happen with it. Um, uh, so I, 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 don't, I don't have a lot of uh, sympathy for that. I don't, I don't think 
um, people owe the community um, uh, giving back. People should contribute because uh, it's useful to them. Uh, they, they get their patches fixed upstream, uh, they become, you know, there, there's lots of motivations, lots of reasons uh, uh, to contribute besides guilt. Um, and uh, I, I don't think we need, we need that one. Um, that makes sense? Yeah. Chief ethical officer seems like a, a reasonable idea. I mean, certainly some sort of ethical review board. Um, uh, but it, it also needs to be not just an, an encapsulated function. I think it needs to be throughout um, uh, the design process. Uh, you need to be thinking, uh, is this something uh, that uh, I, I, people would trust? And I think the, the core of trust um, is, uh, are you doing things that people would expect you to do reasonably? Um, or are you doing something that's going to surprise them? Uh, and they're going to go, what? You did that with my data? Um, and it doesn't matter so much what your um, you know, license agreement says. Um, uh, people don't read that. Um, what matters is their expectations. And so people, it's, that's the first thing to understand, is what do people expect you to do? Uh, and what, you know, what do people expect is reasonable? Um, uh, so people, if you're you know, using a navigation part program, people might think it's reasonable to use your location to um, uh, identify traffic congestion. Um, uh, but to use your location for other purposes sort of seems off limits. Um, and doesn't matter what the, what the license agreement says for, for your location data. And, and I think that goes for, you know, a, a thing. So it's a, it's, a, it's a subtle thing. Um, uh, there's people who are, who've done a lot of thought about it um, uh, in the healthcare industry. They've, they've been working on this, these issues for a long time um, uh, about how you uh, still manage to aggregate data um, and do research um, at the same time as, as respect people's privacy. Um, and that's a very, very similar problem uh, to a lot, a lot of big data issues. Do you see technology firms maybe have a responsibility in pushing that issue a bit more? Because at the moment, you want to remain, a lot of them want to remain agnostic in what they're doing, really. But it's quite an important thing because you're trusting, not trusting, but the technology is moving in a given direction and making the powers that be more aware of. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, mean, I don't think you. It's a matter of being agnostic. It's a matter about caring about your your future. If you if you uh, you know offend your users, you're going to lose them, um, uh, and you might lose them to the degree that your industry becomes outlawed um, if they get angry enough. Um, uh, and so I, I think it's something people need to take very seriously. Um, uh, you know, there there, there can be um, real backlash. We haven't really formed. Um, uh, clear legal policies about, about data protection um, in most uh, countries, most jurisdictions. Uh, that, that's still happening. Um, and uh, it's uh, the more that people offend, the more that, that institutions offend people's sensibilities, um, uh, then, then the stricter uh, the legal climate's going to be. Um, uh, so it's, uh, it, it's, it's up to us. Uh, to make sure that we, we don't offend people, that we do respect them, that we do build their trust. And that also is going to keep them coming back to your business. I, I hear a lot of people who will say they don't want to use the same vendor for their email as their calendar because then the company will know too much about them. Uh, and that's, that's a failure. Uh, if, you're, if you don't trust uh, the company that's storing either of your you know, email or your calendar um, with that data and not to abuse it, um, that's a problem. Uh, that 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 the, you know those those vendors are not doing a good job of, of building your 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 trust that they're they're doing something reasonable. Um, uh, anyway, you, I could go on with all. The, there's a lot a lot of paranoia you hear from people out there. I don't know what you know the, the, the practices people have, and I think all of those are indications of of uh, failures of trust. Um, Ted. Yeah. As, uh, I think you were actually asking about vendors of technology and our responsibilities, and Doug and I represent yeah. vendors. And I think that what we have is a responsibility to our customers to provide tools that satisfy the needs they have, which then are to behave ethically. If we don't provide tools that allow people to do that, then our customers will fail, and we will fail. Yeah. But there will be market pressures on us if there are ethical pressures on our customers. There's an awareness that, that so, so for example, you about the legal system. The legal system can't necessarily cope with the pace of this technology moves. And 
Right. No, so, I mean, the selfish vendor perspective is if we, if we want this industry to, to grow so that our market can grow as a vendor, um, then we need it to grow responsibly or else it's going to be limited um, uh, by, by its, own, its own failures. Um, and so that's a, that's a sort of the, 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 the Cladera perspective on that. I mean, we're in, in some ways uh, the, the arms dealers here. Um, and uh, and we, we want to we sell to the good states. Um, uh, so <laughs> I don't know. That's maybe a, not a good metaphor, but... <laughs> Yeah. What, what is it? Distributions don't distributions don't kill people. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. So, what would be uh, an impactful use case that would have surprised duck cutting uh, in the lifetime of you know? I don't would say you know. This is, but some, somebody came to you and said, "I'm using it for this," and you're like, "Wow." Um, uh, I mean, the healthcare ones I always I always find um, pretty pretty wonderful. Um, uh, we did a, a, a thing with Cerner. Um, uh, where they're gathering data from hospitals uh, and using it to better predict um, which patients might get sepsis, um, uh, which is a, you know, can be a fatal disease, um, and, uh, and then uh, identify, flag those people and, and say, you know, treat this person specially because they, they're a high likelihood to get sepsis. Um, and by their statistics, they've saved hundreds or more of lives um, uh, through the hospitals because they just... They provide this as a, as a free part of their data service. They provide data services to hospitals throughout the U.S. I don't know if it's in the world. I don't know how big Cerner is. But, um, so that's a neat one. Um, uh, the uh, genomics stuff is fascinating. And I think, at a, at a, at again, at an early stage, we're going to see, see decades of progress there. Um, I was at a talk recently at uh, Santa Cruz, UC Santa Cruz um, uh, in, in California. And uh, they are getting... Uh, the um, sequences of um, uh, tumors uh, in kids that have been very uh, resistant to any standard treatment. Um, and they do this cool thing. They, they look at the, um, uh, the, the sequence of, of normal cells in the, in the child and sequences of, of the tumor, um, and then they diff those, um, and they find out what the mutation was. Um, uh, and then they search a, a database that they're trying to build of mutations and find out which treatments were effective against that mutation. And it turns out that um, actually knowing the mutations, uh, for one thing, is a much better way to classify tumors than by what organ they're in or what they look like. Um, uh, and, and, that, and that in terms of uh, classifying them for treatment, um, what, what treatments are effective. Um, and then they can also start to understand um, I, I don't, I'm not enough of a, of a geneticist or a biologist, um, uh, the, the pathways um, uh, that these genes take uh, in being expressed and, and going from, uh, I guess, who knows, it goes from DNA to RNA to protein, I think is the, is the sequence. Um, and there's a, there's a, a sort of a, a network that each gene has that's, that's unique. And so you can have, once you sort of understand which ones are in, in play in a given um, tumor, even if it's a unique um, mutation, if you, can, if you can plot the pathway, which again, it's data, it's just sequencing these various things, um, uh, then you can try to find a drug that blocks a particular step in that process um, and kill the tumor that way. Um, and they're having a lot of success. Um, there's still a lot they don't understand, but it's pretty exciting to see um, that they're able to turn, uh, you know, the can cancer, which is the, uh, you know, the, the, the the sort of um, uh, what's, the, what's the, the grand problem of, of healthcare that's been around, you know, that, that really been difficult to, to get a hold on, and, and they're kind of getting at the root cause of it um, and treating it as a data problem. Um, and I think I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, uh, so those ones are, are always very exciting. I also love the um, uh, the sort of the, the you know the the, the, the tractors and, and stuff like that. These uh, big uh, caterpillar trucks that are. Uh, you know, have hundreds of sensors on them, streaming data back to, uh, to Peoria, Illinois, and, uh, and they're doing predictive maintenance on that. And the same thing, Airbus is doing the same stuff um, uh, with, with jets, and, uh, you know, Tesla's doing that with cars. Um, uh, that's, that's pretty neat to see, uh, that we're improving um, uh, what I think of as, you know, not high, traditionally high-tech industries um, uh, and um, with, with high-tech. Um, that's kind of fun to see. So yeah. Maybe, maybe one more question, and then I know you've got okay. other things you're going to have to attend to. So. Did, I, did I distribute my questions fairly around the room? I don't want to. 
Uh, all right, go ahead. We talk about uh, the importance of open source. Mm -hmm. um, do you think uh, the same thing would happen with uh, open data? Um, question is, do I think the same thing can happen with open data as, as open source? It's a little trickier uh, with, with, uh, with, with data, which especially, I mean, the, 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 the data sets that I think are most interesting um, are things which you really don't want to be open, um, that have, that have uh, personal information about people. Um, uh, I think open data is, is awesome. I think um, you know, most government data sets uh, should be open. Um, you know, uh, bidding processes, a lot, of, a lot of things which it's definitely in society's interest um, to know uh, that governments haven't traditionally published um, and which can be very easily published. Um, uh, and so and so I, I think open data, data is a, a wonderful thing, but there's also a lot of great data uh, that you can't just publish freely, um, that you, you have to um, uh, you know, anonymize somehow um, and, uh, I, or, or share under some you know, legal agreement or there's, there's a lot of mechanisms um, uh, that, that we, we need to, and we need more improved mechanisms um, uh, to, to share data, um, but uh, that, that's, that's again and again, industry, and, uh, industry after industry, um, we care the most about data when it touches people. Um, and, and people also, uh, you know, it has the most value then, um, but it also has the most value to do damage to those people's lives, um, and so we need to control it. And so I think, I think that's, that's a tough one for open data. Yeah, no, I, so I mean, it's interesting, this, um, uh, this, this database at UC Santa Cruz that they're building, um, they have a global public database um, of mutations and it's indexed by mutation. That's the only thing that's published. They, so you can't identify um, the patient um, in any way. You can only identify the mutation that the, the, the tumor uh, had. Um, uh, so that's, that's an interesting case of where they can um, have a, uh, a, a, a I, guess, I guess you'd call it an open data set. Um, uh, that's, that's uh, globally available, but which is completely uh, anonymized about individuals. So that's, when that's possible, that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing to be able to do. So I guess that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, do you want to stay for another six hours? And we keep you <laughs> I, I think I'd rather get some sleep tonight. Okay. So thank you. Thank you all very much. much.